What's up, man? Bart. Bart. So you're gonna be first, just so you lead. You're gonna go through the when the walk-in starts, like go through the middle on our side. That's pretty normal, up the steps. Okay. And then there's gonna be like lines on the floor, just stop for a minus. Yeah, you stay in front of your PC, they stay in front of theirs, and so on. Okay. You saw it, it's a fantastic stage, and from that player's perspective, even YNK is getting those itchy palms wanting to jump back into the player's seat. And the one particularly lounging as JDM has to go ahead and put on a fantastic performance in order to get to a third, never mind get to that semi-final. We've already seen some fantastic play. Cloud9 and Na'Vi will meet tomorrow in the top half of the bracket for their semi-final, and now it's time to see just how things are gonna go down in liquid phase. Freiburg and Sponge once again residing, and I think the fun discussion here is, do we, do we even get to see a third? We've just been kind of pouring over the data, Adam. It doesn't look like Train necessarily has been a, po a point of great success for that of Liquid. No, definitely not. I mean, past three months we looked up and I mean, they're five and five and they haven't really gotten a big win. Uh, they, they did play here though. They, sure. did play, they, win, they won against Immortals on overtime, 1915. Um, I mean, sure, they, could, they might have just have a feeling, you know, but then you go on, f on to playing face and I mean, when I played, I remember just never play face on train, right? Train sure. and overpass are one of those, like two of those maps where face are their comfort zone, right? Um, I mean, uh, I would just like, if I were liquid, I'd probably go for a more like trying to get Mirage maybe in, like sure. some, something else, because I just feel like train is like face territory right now. Yeah, I, and I think if you played a different map like Mirage, you could have had a chance for your stars like Twist and Leash to step up and have a bit of a brawl and battle back. But in this map, especially now that we're going to have face starting on the CT side and they just finished off on the CT side relatively strong, right? Uh, sure. They're going to be fired up and pumped up and carry that momentum through. If they grab yet another pistol, they can shut you out. And the issue that I have with train is it's very difficult to do, to go away from the, the normal pacing that teams want to do right which yeah. is go inside force the rotation either hit that bomb site early on and make sure that they have to be be honest and maybe have a close rotator and not cheat four players very aggressively in the yard and then once you do that you go back to outside strats later on in the game but phase on a team who are going to have too many issues with that especially with Kia playing that inner bomb site he loves getting multi-frags playing around that bomb train playing around the coils yeah. very effective in those kind of regions so i think it needs to be more of an instinctual-based style of Counter-Strike coming out from Liquid. And this is like the optic when Stan was in-game leading did very well. People would find space, they would find those opening kills, and then everyone else would cascade in behind them and take, take the room and, and play off each other. Sure. And we've, I mean, we've seen better stuff from Liquid even on maps such as Inferno, which would be cropping up as a third if we need it. Yeah. But definitely a discussion to see why Train kind of cropped up and Liquid have an opportunity to prove it. This is they have do or die, sink or swim, win Train, or you're eliminated from the quarterfinal. Didn't quite catch the odds there, but no doubt in the favor of FaZe <laughs> from our sponsors, Betway. It's just, this is of course for the entire Jeez, series. Yeah, so Whoa, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, these are series, series odds, no, no longer being updated between maps. And I mean, even then it would make more sense. One to five, whew, okay, Liquid. Yeah. Odds stacked against them. They've, they've literally. blown our minds. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <For> literally. <months>. <laughs> <laughs> but um, outside of that, the discussion is also simply, they've done, um, simply, huh, they've, si they've previously stood on that grand final stage. They know what it feels like. And now they, that hunger, no doubt, is in the pit of their bellies. Being able to perform versus FaZe, though, no easy feat. They've lost to the likes of Astralis convincingly. A win versus G2. If you are trying to build a happy ending for Liquid, what on earth has to go right and wrong here, Chad? For me, they have to play the type of Counter-Strike they were probably playing back in Cologne 2016, which is more like what we're seeing out of Cloud9 right now, which is they just do what they feel comfortable doing. And the issue is that's never going to be a consistent brand of Counter-Strike. Yeah. So I'm going to put a, a bit of a sad ending on this one here that for Liquid to get better, they have to keep playing the style that they have right now, which means they probably are going to lose this map in relatively convincing fashion. But for the, for the, best, for the betterment of North American Counter-Strike, I think that they need to continue down this path because they are actually building the right style and something that we'll be able to compete in the very near future.
And they've yep. often been put in the category of the teams from North America that, that do better when in a European realm, when in the tier one competition outside of perhaps Cloud9 dubbed domestic heroes. Well, now they stand already in the semi-finals. Liquid and CLG perhaps in that category. But Adam, do you have any, any sort of, I don't know, shining light at the end of the train tunnel? Well, I was just thinking about it. Like, if they would want to pick a train against FaZe, I'm guessing that they're prepared, right? Something, they have right? Zeus, which has been on SK. He's won majors with SK. Maybe they have a super big plan here. Yeah. I'm, excited, I'm excited to see what they, what they can bring on train, because um, if you pick a train against FaZe, you get to have something planned, right? I guess maybe one thing that they can be looking to do is take advantage of the rotations on the CT side. Like, that seems to be a go-to nowadays, but people tend to play those situations very similar, right? Yeah. When someone gets forced into this position, how do we react? Um, the problem is, if FaZe are going to go with the same level of confidence we saw with Rain flanking all the time, it's very difficult because they're no longer playing to... You haven't made them respect you enough to play their normal brand of Counter-Strike, and something which we spoke about earlier in the week, it's something that I suffered quite a lot, and something that the better team should always take advantage of. And something you also mentioned, and it kind of piqued my interest, I mean, perhaps not often discussed for those at home, is the, the default approach to, to T-side train. You, yeah. were, you were talking regarding inner takes early, try and draw a second CT into inner. Now, I mean, is, that, is there more to it than that, or is it simply that's an approach many teams will, will take to train? That's the current meta. That's Your team it. did that a lot. You had that really cool like, wall of mollies and stuff behind the bomb train and pop. Yeah. And I think that's still the best idea to keep teams honest. Okay, well, honestly, we're ready to go. Players are on the stage. They've been doing their team huddles, and now hands are returning to the mouse and keyboard. Unfortunately, not, the, not necessarily the least doom and gloom desk we've had, but either way, Liquid have to start boiling up here if they want to bring the heat on that third map. We'll get into it, though. Your Hastas are locked and loaded. It's Henry G and Sadakis to guide you through train. Yes, thank you, Alex. We will guide you through train. It yeah. usually runs on a set of rails, but I like to derail things every now and then, so you maybe do. we'll end up somewhere in the woods. Uh, it's, it's definitely... I thought, I, I even said at the end of last game, I was sure FaZe had to have picked train. Just my head, even though I knew better, crossed those wires because this is a, tr a, a map that FaZe typically love to play. So Absolutely. if they picked it, I agree with the desk, they have to have something planned. Well, we saw poor showings from them against Optic yesterday as well, so it makes sense. Liquid got to watch that game and saw their weaknesses lie, perhaps. But the good news is for FaZe, because it's Liquid's pick, they saw on the CT side, they can count on that momentum. And we'll see what they can do here in the first half of train. Run away, ladies and gentlemen, the second map. Liquid versus FaZe. Four sets of armor on the T side, one smoke as well. This looks like a fast-paced tactic here. The smoke's deployed, the flashbangs are coming in. It's JDM to go first. Deep breath as they make their way towards the A side. Look how passive that CT positioning is. They're forced all the way back, close to Z Connector, even in B, so they can rotate, which they will now. They're going to have to because Alu goes down and brings Kiyoshima back over toward the A site, the outer site. And not only does it bring him there, it gets him a kill on the bomb planter. Elige, he wanted the fast plant. He's gone already. The kit. It's in Keo's hands as well. So he's positioned well. Twist gets Rain and Kerrigan. I think he spotted the player heading up toward the control room, but Nico's got a better shot on to Twist in return from Sandwich. Keo dropped back down. Stan finds him. Nico versus two. And they will get the plants. Or will they double face? Double face and a reload. Nico has to back away. He gives it up. Remember, bomb down where Keo died. Or rather, excuse me, kit down where Keo died. The anti bomb, if you will. And Nico's going to get ever closer to the bomb train. They've backed off in accordance. They're going to play toward Ebox and the red train. Peak together easily for Stanislaw and Nitro. Nico closer and closer has picked up the kit with the armor. He's perfect accuracy. He has it, but even that's not quick enough. And Nitro is able to trade it back. Liquid go up 1-0. Nico comes tantalizingly close to clutching that one out, but time was ticking away. He knew where they both were, gets the first shot, but a good refract there from Liquid. It's looking quite scary for them as well, especially when the bomb went down. The Stanislaw getting up close and personal with the Glock, finds that key frag on the bomb train itself, shuts down Kiyoshima, and we go into a round victory there for Liquid. 1-0 in favor of the North Americans. We're going to have not a full come in terms of force, but we do have four players with body armor and some upgraded pistol here for Alu. He's got the... Just the PC-50 there, meaning he can get the AWP in that first gun round. So, still can be very deadly here. Phase round number two. We do have two rifles to work with for Liquid as well. Three UMPs. Full array of utilities. So, they'll be holding up for now. No rushes here. No panic decisions. Just hold up. Gain control of the Brown Halls, for example. That would make a lot of sense. Make sure there's no CTs getting information on that part of the map. Then execute. Once you've at least established where the stack could lie, try and get the first pick in your favor. As they start to go towards that aforementioned area. We do have one player on the lower ramp, though. That's Kiyoshima. Waiting behind the smoke with the 5-7. We'll see if he can step up here. One minute remaining now as... I feel like the bomb's still down in T-spawn. Nico's pushed out of Ivy, though, with that Deagle as well. Very long-range weapon as he does hit JDM down to 52 HP. 52, that'll do. 
SMG. Well, though, Nico. They had himself back toward the inner site with a deagle. They get ready to work in through the Brown Hall's needs. At the ready, smoke for Stanislaw Kio at the bottom of the ramp, wants to strike as soon as possible. Elise will drop off the ledge and arrive at his face quite quickly. Back turn, drop down, good shot for Kio. Follows it up, oh my goodness, Kiyoshima, he's got three. It's Nitro and Twist. The last alive, Nitro will pull it back ever so slightly with the AK, but he's on three HP. It won't take much to put him down, a pistol, doesn't matter. Alu's got the shot, and stepping out, Alu follows it as well. Kio did an absolutely incredible job at lower. Brilliant stuff there. Let's just enjoy that for a moment. He was in this position the entire round. The 5-7, a great close range weapon there, and you can see managing to get three kills in total. That's the UMP is getting shut down. Amazing run there from Kiyoshima. Did damage to the fourth as well. And FaZe Clan steal it away. Pistols across the board. It's going to be the same story for Liquid now. They'll force by into round number three. Tech 9's P250s. And this sets the tone for the game. We have this in the first map as well. There's back and forth forced by meta. We'll see whether it works out. As Nico wants to get aggressive towards Ivan, wants to get the information here, but the smokes have been deployed towards outside. The bomb commits towards outer. And there should be a plan here, but they're boosting up as Ali finds the first frag. The first frag, and perhaps a little bit more as he sprays through. He does damage, but can't follow it. Stand to get Kerrigan instead. Another bomb plant to JDM this time, but Nico will be behind them. That'll thwart any possibility of an organized post plant position. It's JDM. Nico continues to push in. Twist. He's gotten low enough, close enough, and low enough against Rain that one more bullet would take him down. Oh. Off at the ladder position. They know exactly where he is. This round will go to phase. It will indeed. Nice push there from Nico once again. Getting that either position. Only gets two frags, right? But they're two very important ones. They have no idea it's coming that position as well. Took down Twist in the end. Sure, the bomb goes down and Nitro survives, but should be an eco next round for Liquid. Phase can be three players alive there at that point as well. So quite comfortable overall. Full execution. Wall of smokes towards outside. Very common when you just have the Tech Nines there. A lot of run and gun potential pushing through the smokes. Trying to get that snowball effect in your favor. Got a couple of frags, but. It was all for naught. They have to take this round of the gym. FaZe Clan after losing the pistol. Strike back. Two in a row for them now. No wall coming out just yet, but they can be comfortable going to round number four here. No, it's pretty much a full eco. We have some deagles and tech nines, but no nades or armor to work with here. So just hold back. Crossfire set up. Try and keep five players alive on the CT side. I would say towards inner. Makes a lot of sense. We know the trades can be beneficial towards the terror, towards that lower ramp. You've got a high chance of getting the bomb down here. They're focusing towards Ivy for now, and Rain continuing that accuracy as he finds Stanislaw at the very start of the round. Kiyoshima has the inner bomb site covered off by way in virtue of covering the corner in the brown halls, pushed up aggressively with the M4. So if they go that way, which it looks like they are increasingly interested in doing, he will greet them. And here we go. That direction it will be. As he passively peeks it out, timing was right. The shot was not. Ooh, Molotov at least it will cover the corner, but won't go deep enough. Nade down to the ramp to make sure if they push it, he does max damage where possible. It's a lineup instead for Nico. Twist found Alu, but did the rest of it. It's going to be Kyo up close to close it. So 3 1 for FaZe. Good setup, straightforward. Kiyoshima had all the information. They rotated over accordingly. Solid round from FaZe. They've already pressured there. As I said, Liquid focusing on that inside area. It's normally where you want to go. You can potentially get a trade to get one kill, but no bomb plant going down once again. Money's okay, though, for Liquid, seeing as they've got the bomb down in the round before that. They get the AWP out for JDM, of course, four AKs, but Alu, very proficient AWP on this map. We'll see whether the CTs want to present any aggression. We did say FaZe looked a little bit cagey, but that's the first shot there. Alu hits the leg shot, then Nico with the follow-up incendiary takes down the AWP on the Liquid side. JDM dropped to the fire. As we go in a 5 4 they'll commit through Pop Dog and Rain, just mowing them down, and he gets three, joining with Nico as well. Looking for the fourth, but can't get it. Just Stanislaw now to try and recover the situation. Alu. Looking down the lane, but Nico gets above the smoke to find Stan first. Six HP, FaZe about to find their fourth round. And Liquid with guns, get nothing done. It's now full control for FaZe. 4-1 in FaZe favor. That was a really exciting round. I don't like the decision there. They lost the first frag, sure. They're trying to get the refrags, but running through that deep smoke, you have such a gray screen. Rain just can't believe his luck. What, three kills on a play? I'll take that all day long. They used one flashbang, but he's behind the E-box and got away with that. A bit of disappointing start for Liquid, I have to say. Nice shot from Mali to kick things off as well. Sure, he doesn't get the frag, but he does 85 damage, meaning the incendiary just had to touch. JDM at that main entrance, it certainly did. Took him to the grave. 
Went to round number six, another partial buy here. We're looking for maximum loss bonus for Liquid next round. So Smokes, Tech Nines, Body Armor with $3,400 coming in next round. You want to keep your money about the 2k mark, exactly what Liquid have done. So objective, try and get the bomb down here. Still can win these rounds, but very unlikely, especially when Nico's hitting shots like this. But Nitro, with the return frag at least. Good shot, Nico to push back up though and get Stannis lost, so return frag all you like. Nitro at least has an AK to work with. One HP for poor old Nico. And in they go, B site down the ramp, smoke in front, elevated position, Alu finds Elysia immediately. Starts to look elsewhere, thinking they might be going in upper because there's no one to follow in Elysia's footsteps early, but instead Nitro walks in and finds Rain. They'll give them a bomb plant as well for Twist on nine. As Alu wants to get the AWP somewhere, they can find an angle, and it certainly has. Nine HP for Twist, I'm saying round done. I don't know about you, Henry. I think you could be right at this point. He might get one kill, but... Yeah, that should be the end of them. There it is, Carrigan at the final frag. So a decent attempt there with the Tech Nines. Couple of frags, bomb down as well. It's not too bad at all. Means to have a very good buy going into round number seven. Scoring right now 5-1 in favor of FaZe. It is certainly a CD-sided map, but FaZe, you remember yesterday against Optic, only got four rounds on their CD side. So they've gone one better than that already. This is looking pretty good for them, I have to say. FaZe now seeing some big names turn up. Nico, 11 frags, one death. Once you let him get in the zone, you've got a massive problem. He has a poor start to the game, which he has throughout this tournament. He's had a few maps where he's done like one for nine, for example. You can probably contain him throughout the rest of the half. But if he starts off with this, six rounds gone by, he's in double digits. You've got one hell of a problem on your hands. Kerrigan out toward Ivy. Stanislaw and JDM. Are heading in that direction. AWP as well for Alu. They could easily run boost past that, but Kerrigan's positioning would capitalize if they elect to do so. And it looks like they will keep an eye on Kerrigan. If he even pushes through at all on the run boost, he'll catch them off. Good trade, therefore, from JDM. Alu wasn't holding the same angle. If he was, it could have gone back the other way just as quickly. But Liquid at least get the kill in return. Things quieting down now as we go into the 4-on-4. Four four. Nico looking to cause some chaos here as well behind the smoke. JDM knows he'll be present here, but every time he scopes, he gives his position away. He needs to be very careful here. Throws a grenade. Nico could be flashed in. You can see Alu next to him. He's got a flashbang available as well. Doesn't get flashed, but surely Nico gets his frag. There is some backup coming in, and JDM somehow comes out on top of that situation. Alu with the grenade as well. Should not take him down. 3-on-3. Three three. This round is very back and forth. Not clear who's going to be winning it just yet. No decent map control for the terrorist just as of now, but Nitro above this smoke, Rain on the other side. This is probably the key frag of the round. Absolutely. JDM's done so well to pull them back. He's going to silently go down as well. If that smoke dissolves and Rain's watching a main, it goes Nitro's way. Who finds the other first? Rain gets Nitro, who shot early but didn't have the accuracy down. It gave himself away, and now Rain's able to fire off toward a main. Molotov locks him out. But as they get closer to the site, Kiyoshima and Alu will start to rotate into much better positions. Point in case as Kiyoshima takes down Twist, trying to plant the bomb, and that's the round done. Five seconds, it's over. Give him no money. Oh, he's got to get the kill. Stop, survive. That's actually a huge kill. Another up close oh. kill, and he's got to run. Kiyoshima wanted to end it just as he got to zero there. If he just tucks himself in the corner, probably kills him after the timer as well. But they save the AWP. Do you know what? That could come back and horn Liquid, though. They're going to force up around that. They get enough for AKs and armor, I think. And there's a bit of utility there as well. They have just about enough to work with here. Just to check in with the scoreboard map. Elige, zero and seven. JDM, three and six. There's two big names we need to arrive on train, especially JDM with the AWP. I think he got three frags in that round in total, so that's pretty much the first time he showed up. At least yet to post anything. Down 6-1. Stannis will now the AK-47. Can get nothing done. Rain. Fantastic half from him. It's going to be towards inside. It was all a ruse, but Kiyoshima is ready for it. Two frags for him. Looking for the third as well. Still alive as he drops the incendiary. Molotov lands. JDM. AWP waits for the Molotov to extinguish as Nitro will slip up. Oh, it gets segregated by an additional Molotov. Pause called already. Wow. Rain cuts him off from a flank behind. It's now 7-1. We said this was gonna happen on train if FaZe was alive. And it's a timeout call for Liquid. Remember, it is their map choice. This is the Liquid we know and love. Oh, sorry, this is the FaZe we know and love, I should say. Not Liquid, this is- um, I don't know if anyone loves this no, Liquid. No, exactly. <laughs> Kiyoshima looking very good. Maybe Moses does. Side. Maybe, you never know. Keeps him on edge. But 7-1 for FaZe. They're looking to assert another, taking jewels. They're pushing Ivy. They want to get up close and personal with Liquid. And you can see, a pause comes in. Another clean round there for FaZe towards inside, especially. We saw one player make his way out towards main entrance. Shut down by Rain. He's had a phenomenal half as well. The big names, Kiyoshima, Rain, Nico. Both of them posting big numbers. 
sure we have maximum loss bonus, but no bomb plant in the last couple of rounds, one of which timed out as well, means they have to take another eco here. Still early days, though, 7 1. Liquid can still bounce back and win this half, believe it or not, but not looking likely to be the case going into round number nine here. Tech Nines, Deagles, a few smokes to work with as well, presumably with just two smokes, that's it, go towards inner. But the problem is, Rain, he's at the upper round, but he's playing like an absolute monster right now. He's looking to greet them at this upper platform. AK in hand as well. Flashbang's good. Doing some damage, but conservative play drops the incendiary and falls back. Drops back. Indeed. JDM and Elise looking to go again. They'll bounce a smoke down that goes further than always. Down to the Z connector, but it goes further than Kiyoshima, who's above. And a triple kill for Keo leaves Alu to collect the last and final kill. It goes 8-1. Looking all too comfortable right now for FaZe. There's another brilliant spray down there. Keo Shima has been such a rock on the inside bomb site. Round number 10, Liquid have money back in their favor. All power for JDM again. Quiet game. I think the three frags he has has all been in a single round. A liege. Still 0 for 9. Not good enough so far. They're currently a map down here, and Alu aggressive towards the lower round, wants to try and find this first pick. This is Fallen style. Alu known to be an aggressive AWP as well, the timings could be perfect for him as he goes around the corner. It's a scary position to be in, looking for someone to walk in his crosshair here. It could just happen. Alu ready to pull the trigger, can't find the shot. He'll fall back and he's got Nico to back him up here. Doing a very good job as well. Nico, strong as ever, two frags in his favour. Five on three once again, Liquid being shut down across the board. As soon as Alu misses the shot, they're backing each other up. It's at the twist now. Great aimer, young talent. He didn't step out towards the E-Box, can't find the shot though. In fact, he did take down Kiyoshima, it was such a quick reply. Goes to the 4 on 2. Surely Liquid can't get back into this round. Kerrigan, he's gonna spray down both. Stan and JDM go out of it. 9-1, phase continue on. Well, looking very good at this point. Phase clan in a dominant position. 9-1. Has to be another eco at this point as well. Tech Nines, Deagles, Armor. And we'll have a little bit to work with here as well. Flashbangs and we're going to round number 11. Ali with the AWP. Tries to spot in toward A main, but Kerrigan's tasked instead with watching Ivy. This time the run boost is successful. I'm not sure Kerrigan spotted the feed or not, but he's going to smoke it off as he leaves the position anyway. Nitro instead toward Brown Halls with a liege. Again, no money, no guns for liquid. Things are evaporating in all the wrong ways. Boiling does lead to evaporating, Alex, but this is not the hot liquid you were talking about. We'll see what liquid can do here. Desperate times, go for desperate measures. They have one smoke. Flashbangs to work of us here as well, but it looks like it's a pretty default play towards outside the Tech Nines, and it's Nika playing in front of the smokes. Rain and Popdog as well. Surely they get nothing done here. Molotov out of position as well, just as they commit. I think this is too obvious. Phase ready and waiting. Look at that, the trifecta of doom. We talk about that all the time. More so in this round, especially. It's going to be raining Nico to open things up. It is a bit of a massacre. Ali finds his first frag at least in twist, fighting back with the Desert Eagle. But it looks like he can only get one, two, in fact, as well. Makes the round interesting. As twist in the two versus one situation. Still has 83 HP. Desert Eagle in hand, but shut down eventually by Kiyoshima. A little bit interesting around there, but they're not posting anything at the top of the scoreboard there. Double digits for phase, 10-1. Money around coming in once again for Liquid. Yeah, well, they need it. They need a, a bailout. Yeah, this is looking overwhelming now. AWP brought up for JDM. Five smokes. Got armor on everyone on the reverse side of things. There's kits for all but Kerrigan and lots of utility, lots of money sure. on the phase clan side. Money, in fact, is up near 15k in some cases. Good push oh through from Nico. He's already got stand down. Liquid are sitting ducks at this point in time. Yeah, not scared to take jewels anymore. This is the phase we wanted to turn up. Assertive, confident counter-strike at this point. Nico pushing Ivy once again. They have no answer for it. He finds the initial frag, funnels him back towards inside, and Kiyoshima, he's more than happy to be ready and waiting. He's been an absolute beast on the inside bomb site. Towards lower they go. Dry, it seems as well. Kiyoshima does damage, he can't find the initial shot. Buys himself some time in the incendiary and keeps finding frags. Surely Liquid can't do anything with this, but Elise in a decent position. He gets his frag for sure. Good shot, Elise. Watch as he swings around to make sure the smoke's deployed and cover off the position for the plant. Finally, Liquid. 
him down at least. Yeah, something to work with. It's Kerrigan and Rain going to sneak up the tanker side. Top of the tanker drops off. Rain made noise. Did Elise hear it? Definitely not. He's got his back turned. Rain's easy to pick up one. They go down to a two versus two. He'll clear below his teammate so they can get closer yet again. All the nades going through. Smoking the bomb already. Twist, that hit him. Now they would have known that. Rain's alone. Definitely know that Twist was inside Ooh. of it somewhere. Good shot, JDM. Not only did we mention the money in the AWP, they needed a round. They get one to survive. And Leash finds a second frag that is probably one of the most key as well. Opening up that B bomb side, takes down Kiyoshima finally at that point. Pushing round. And they get number two on the board. It's a Leash calling for the pause this time. Allows Zeus to chime in. Might be technical considering the Advents coming in. So can't actually discuss anything. Zeus cannot get involved in this one. Round number 13. You need at least four here, I'd say, on the T side to stand a chance against the likes of FaZe. They lost the first frag that time, back towards inside. Much more promising. They did the right job there. Shutting down Kiyoshima, pushing deep into the bomb site, stopping the rotations. Comes down to two versus one with Rain, but JDM hitting a decent shot from the lower ramp. But now we're going to a double orb situation for FaZe. Carrigan, of course, the second of the orb previously of Astralis. Now moving into that role on FaZe as well. Hello. Main all for him, we'll just check him with the scoreboard right now. Surely Kiyoshima's got it at the top. Nico with 15 and 4, then Kiyoshima, then Rain. That's the numbers we've expected at the top with this phase lineup. Haven't seen it previously throughout this tournament. Seen some of the big names right at the very bottom, but this is looking very good for them now. I think it's just a headset issue. I can have a look. Not clear, Matt. It's a mystery. A mystery indeed. So technical timeouts, the teams are unable to talk to each other. A bit of laughter going on, so who knows. Either way, Liquid, this is a big round, Matt, considering the fact there's such a deficit, 10 to 2. Only two players surviving in the previous round. They win it, but after the reinvestment, they probably come down to about $1,000 per player. Lose this round, that could be the end of the half. It could be a 13-2. I admire the Liquid fans trying to encourage their spirits, but that clap is rhythm to that of Kerrigan, who's playing with the crowd. So I would say FaZe has the support out there as of right now. We have some, it seems like overwhelming Liquid fans here. Yeah, there's some, there's some decent ones. Yeah. Making some noise at least. I seems. will say last year at this event, Liquid, they would have captured a number of hearts in their run to the final in the major last year in Cologne. Keep that in mind, and I remember uh, very specifically being out there with a young aspiring caster by the name of Blue, who was having a heck of a time jumping around with some Liquid fans who were having a heck of a time not only cheering but indulging, yeah. if you will. That's very true. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was an eventful day. An experienced team, Liquid. You have to remember they've been to semifinals and grand finals and majors, so these guys used to this sort of environment. Once again, looking to book his place in the semifinals here in Cologne, but... Something about a mouse driver, I can confirm the technical issue. I'm not sure how that goes wrong mid-game. We'd assume that's kind of locked and loaded before you start. It should be. Unless it's actually in the USB port itself. That wouldn't be the driver, though. What well, if you are just joining us? Where have you been? The third quarter final of the day. This one between FaZe and Liquid. Your team looking to book a place in the semi-finals here. The ESL 1 Cologne. FaZe currently up 1-0 on their map pick, which was overpass. Not the most convincing of starts. After winning the pistol, it looked like Liquid were running away with the majority of the gun rounds, but FaZe got their act together and managed to look like a much more convincing unit in the second. Now they're on Liquid's map pick, and it's currently 10-2. Sure, they're on the T side, but haven't really impressed me so far. And FaZe getting aggressive and getting in their faces. I want to play with the beach ball. As a beach ball? Yeah. At East, yes, we had lots can of we, beach balls, so we, it, was, oh, well. it was a lot of fun. Can we go out and play with that after, Hank? Will you let um, me, please? I've been a good boy. Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, we can do that. That's not a problem. Do you know what the stage reminds me of with all those cubes? Do you know that game that Jason used to play, that, like, impossible game on your phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminds me of that. I think there's a different name for the new version of it, but, yeah, it reminds me a little bit of that. Are you greater than A? Matt, what do you think about that? Uh, I agree. Yeah? Yeah. I'm Even not as gonna, a representative. I'm not going to argue. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'm not falling into the trap that Jason's <laughs> fallen into. Sure. I mean, in Counter-Strike, let's be clear. Oh, look at this. This, is, a, this, this is in heaven on train, that little PC setup. They put... Rain inside that. You'd love to see it. He's in there. That's like, do you remember the game Mist? Yes. The sequel was Riven, and like yeah. the guy was like trapped inside of the book portal. Like that, that's like Rain just being trapped inside of the PC, inside of a PC right now. Yeah. That's pretty cool. 
Oh yeah, I like this. Get your get your phone lights out. Let's let's light this arena up while we've got some time to have some fun. Get them all out, please. Everyone. Everyone, get My your torch out. My phone's dead, so I'm not. I'm allowed to skip that, but no one else is. There we go. That's pretty beautiful, isn't it? Let's get a nice shot of that. Okay, now let's see how good you guys are in the crowd. Can you spell ESL Cologne with your phone lights? They can easily do that. You can see them running around, sorting Come it out. On. Yeah, it's coming together. Yeah, I. Well, maybe. <laughs> if you squint, if you squint. If you guys could actually somehow coordinate that by the end of the event, you'll be my favorite crowd for the rest of, uh, of eternity. My take, I can see it coming together. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you so much. I'm sure we'll be underway eventually. Maybe I'll go just ESL. I'll make it easy. Just three letters. Just oh, ESL so cool. along the back pole. That does look beautiful. That's really cool. We've got the best fans in Counter-Strike, I think, especially in this arena. You guys always show up in spades. So I'm going to have a look at the chat right now. So still a bit of a driver issue, I'm afraid. There it is. Still going. But Liquid on the ropes right now. We do miss some players. It's going to be JDM that's got the problem right now. Just keep you updated. He will be hopefully joining the server eventually. Oh, Matt, look at him. Would you just look at him? It's beautiful. It is. It is. Would you wish upon a star, Hank? I always do. Hasn't worked out for me yet. Well, that's because you're probably wishing on a satellite by accident. That's true. Or a plane passing <laughs> in the sky. You got to really make sure it's a star. It has to be the first one you see, so you can't, can't waste it. Is it wrong to wish upon space hardware? Um, no. Maybe. <laughs> what if is the world coming to? If you don't to? know, give it either way. It could be. It's it's uh, it's you know I will oh, I won't you know what I won't say it. But I'm proud of this crowd for not doing something that I dislike very much so far. What's that? I won't say it because someone will oh, do you're it. Right. No, Chad, it doesn't count if you bring me your phone with a picture of the crowd with ESL <laughs> written in white text over top of it. They have to do it with their phones. He Chad. tried his best. He was trying to get his pumped up. It was a good effort. We just had Chad visit us and trying to suggest that actually I do, I do admire it. Maybe if he tweets it out, people will get an idea of what it lo should look like, and then they can, they can <clears> use that as sort of a template, a blueprint. That's true. We'll see if we can kind of get that ready for tomorrow, perhaps, when we have the semi-finals, of course. This event's just getting started. It's the first day of the arena. There's the beautiful trophy as well. Matt, you've won a few of those in your time. So what's it like to raise the trophy like that? Uh, the last time I would have won a big trophy was probably karting about 10 years ago. <laughs> okay. And so. usually I was uh, either really, really delighted in karting or really pissed off because I got a black flag. Um, so it was pretty, pretty exciting sometimes. Pretty good. Yeah. The beach ball's on the floor. You hate to see it. Someone get it quick. Yeah, that's, that's a party foul. There it is. That's a party foul. Whoever didn't kick that, the closest person to it that let it hit the ground, I'm afraid you're going to have to finish your drink. Water, that's fine. Just finish it. So I know we have a lot of liquid fans in here. When we get back into this game, we need you to blow the roof off. They're going to need all They'll the help. They'll finish they their get. drink. They, I no, guarantee they you they will. They're going to down them? Oh, we won't even know. We'll never know. I'm sure they would. Well, the Liquid fans are still excited. They need to be. 10-2 down, Liquid fans. We need you to start blowing think, the roof off I think completely. Liquid should have... Uh, you know, we've had like a few Fnatic parties and stuff. This is yeah. the city, I think, overseas to do a Liquid party in. Yeah. They seem work. to have good fans here. Absolutely. We're starting to chance as well. Join in if you're a Liquid fan. If I go to the Liquid party, Hank, I promise I will drink lots of liquids. Water? Absolutely. Just the waters. Back to it. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Four people are joining in the channel, at least. I thought I heard five. Uh, you might be right. So, technical time are still causing a little bit of difficulty here. JDM has a mouse driver issue. Oh, Matt, they're doing it. No, we've banned that. No more dabbing. Don't That's stop. exactly stop. what I said. Stop. He's having a seizure. <laughs> He's at, someone get an EpiPen. Someone stick it in him quickly before he dies. <laughs> That's the first one we've had. I thought we were doing a great job so far. Oh, I, I feel... I, uh, Everyone press F to pay their respects to the man who just had a seizure. And press F to pay your respects to G2. <laughs> press F. Light a candle. How many more old beams can we bring up? All of them, really. Can oh. some, what is, what's on that beach ball? I thought I saw Oh, it's a replay. What's, oh, not a replay. Oh, God. God. Who's in production that's about to die? <laughs> Joking, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> no, no one's going to die. Is that... Can, hold up that... Ball. Let me see it to the camera. Just hold it up before you throw it, or just throw it away. Does that I have Maple Leafs on it? I think it was signed by players and stuff. 
I don't know. It looked like it. But there's maple leaves. I, definitely I can hear know. guns being switched. We might be ready to go. JDM's back on the server. It's been fun, guys. It was, it was a pleasure to hang out with you. It was. Like I said, Liquid are going to need your support as we go into the closing stages here of the first half. JDM is back on the server. Looks like the players are buying. Let's make some noise. Let's get back into this. FaZe versus Liquid. Map number two. Scoreline currently 10-2 in favor of the FaZe clan. We're back into it. Absolutely, the unpause comes in. Money, it's looking pretty good for the Liquid side. They do get the orbs out, the AKs as well. Tactical timeout now, Matt, but we bring it all up. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so okay. to be fair, let's explain this, because in a technical timeout, you cannot talk to your team. Absolutely not. It is shut down, <laughs> therefore teams, because in the past, have been accused of using technical timeouts to therefore get extra tactical timeouts. So they have to wait for the tech issue to be fixed before they can call the tactical. The good news is this is a definitive amount of time. We'll be back underway in absolutely yeah. no time at all. I think about 10 seconds if, uh, if my head serves correct in counting. Right, that was the rehearsal of the hype. We're going to do that again. So get ready for it. That was pretty good, but I want to see how loud you can get. Unpause will be coming in momentarily. This one for sure. Tactical timeout, so a chance to work out what the play is as we get into round number 13. ESL 1 Cologne, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, it's coming. The young pause comes in. Baze versus Liquid, make some noise. Hank, you're giving the guy in Croatia a run for his money. I'm as trying my man. best. <laughs> Counter pit this. Well, 10 to 2 indeed, and we go back underway. AWP, three of them. One for Alu, one for Kerrigan, who used to be the primary AWP player in his TSM days, Astralis days in various situations. Stan found already and finds out exactly why he used to be a primary AWP player. It's Stanislaw down and JDM still has his to work with. They don't have any map control with a liege. Rotating back around from the brown halls. It was Carrigan pushing Ivy once again. Why are Liquid not expecting this? Nico's been doing it almost every single round. This time the AWP gives it a go. First shot, even too easy. Stanislaw walks around into his crosshair, takes him down. Liquid need to shut that problem down at this point. Still winnable round, of course, but Rain so deadly towards Popdol. Carrigan repositions towards main entrance. Round number 13. Desperate time to Liquid. I'm not sure what the players, they still have their smokes to work with here, but Carrigan could be gifted another shot here. Too easy once again. Elise walks into the crosshair. Yeah, very slow to peek. It's made it obvious. Carrigan, the Molotov thrown toward him, will back off, take the other side, jump across, realizes he's not going to hit that shot or that one, so waits oh patiently, God, doing? and the patience pays off. Twist it down to Carrigan, his third in the round, Nade, and he's done more damage onto JDM. And the round's pretty much round, wrapped up already on this the secondary op. Of Kerrigan. Get, oh, Salu steals in a fourth. Maybe a find it on the second and effort. Alu gets both of those, but the ops get all five. And yes, yes, it's 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 hard to watch if you're a liquid fan. Hard to watch. But it's beautiful if you are a phase fan. 11-2. <clears throat> I'm not a fan of this from Liquid. They seem like they just haven't got a response to this whatsoever. This feeding phase clan walking into that crosshair is not really having much in terms of utility, not even holding at the start. Seems like they've got an objective in mind and just forgetting the core principles of how to stop the IV aggression at the very start. Not even using flashbangs, not holding of the orb at the T spawn position and stopping that happening. But auto sniper for Carrigan. He's mixing things up. And it's another force by here from Liquid. I think they're all in. They certainly are. They need these last two rounds. That goes without saying. Round number 14, we have Tech Nines, P250s, 2 and Nitro with the UMP. A few smokes to work with, some Molotovs as well. They need this round to go in their favor to have any chance of recovering in map number two. So far, FaZe just running away with this one completely. Molotov's deployed. Still time to work with it, though. Nitro with the UMP. And Liege will go all the way down and back to T-spawn. Round 14 and no guns other side from the UMP and a few Tech Nines. Spells disaster. It also speaks to the fact that they have had one round. $1,400... I guess, injection of cash for the bonus that just starts over against them. This will only be the second, so they'll only get 1,900 into the next round. They're going to have no guns to work with. Bomb plant imperative at this point. Run boost across. Kerrigan spots it. Repositions accordingly. He still wants the angle. Nades will land on top of him. Molotov goes behind him. Smoke, because it's body blocked, ends a little further in the alley than maybe he might have thought. Backs away. Get the tack back. Dak Dak? I think that's what Jack calls back, it. yeah, that's right. Oh, there it comes. He's got it. But, oh, only one kill. Headshot on Twist. Elige beats it with the pistol. Thanks very much. And gone again. Nico finding them trying to wrap around toward B. That reveals that Stan's likely going in the ramp with the bomb, or someone is. And they'll find him 12-2. to two. 
Well, round number 15 coming in. It's 12-2, looking very likely to be 13. Has to be Tech Nines once again. Liquid just haven't got anything done on this season. This is their map pick as well, just to reiterate that. Here's the replay. I think this is Nico to finish things off. M4. It's all these frags. Don't know they have to really sweat too much to pick them up. Has to be smoke execution outside. A fast one at that. Alu wide to receive. He misses the first shot. Smokes are everywhere. Need to get the early plants in here, but damage being done in considerable doses. And Nico puts it through. Gets two frags. That could be a Bold from Nico as Alu backed off the flash in and AWB was ineffective through the smoke. It's still going to be in a position of power trying to climb up to the control room. Spotted by Alij, but they find the shot in return. Stan gets aggressive, but he's the only one left. He's picked up an AK. He's already tagged up through the ticket booth. Pistol out. Spray him down. And 13-2 is where we will land at the half. You talked about the four rounds they got against Optic. I would say that's been addressed. I would say FaZe yeah. are looking like they definitely want to make another final. They got comfortable in the second map. We saw them actually stepping up, getting aggressive. That's the lack of respect we've come to know with FaZe pushing in and taking every single duel they can. Liquid just didn't have a response. They seem out of their depth across the board. Can they recover in the second half? I'm not so sure. We'll take a quick break to not go anywhere. We get back underway and under a heavy load. Liquid get only two rounds in the first half of train. FaZe come away with 13 on the CT side. They win the pistol, Henry. We know what that could mean very well on the T side, especially. There's not much chance to get an early buy for the CTs if they don't pick that up. Nice little tweet there from Skadoodle showing us how the arena did exactly look when we had the lights out. The crowd currently says. That's actually perfect to show that because I think I, I do want to see if we can do that ESL thing. So in the back, three sections. Someone take E, one section. Someone take S, 
Someone take L. I, I, I believe in you guys to at least have someone that's enough of a, a bold personality <laughs> a to lead that. Yes. Betway odds 1-9. to nine. That's almost as much as our score line, 13-2. Well, here we go then, ladies and gentlemen. All in for Liquid. Nothing to lose at this point. Might as well go for it. Two rounds on the board. Need this pistol. It's going to be up to Alu. He's in the Brown Horde right now. Inside area. It's very common to try and find the pistol. The Liquid chance is still going. I can still hear the belief. Did it take more than that? As the final execution commitment comes in from phase here. Well, ramp will be the chosen point of entry. Still have two smokes and a Molotov. Molotov can be safe, but post plant are used towards connector to stop rotations in. Looks like it might be the latter here. Carrigan holds on to it. Kane's gonna push very, very aggressively with double smokes down. Not only in front of Z connector, but also by the yellow train. It puts him very, very close. Smoke dissolving ever so slightly. No, nope, he's just on the edge of it. About six seconds, I would say, before it does dissolve. And you want Z Connector instead. Spars off with Nitro, who wins the duel. But two more players up close. Careful, Kyo, not to give away. As he jumps around, makes a lot of noise. Twist able to find him. JDM follows up on Kerrigan. Things looking good for Liquid. We've gotten all the kills so far until Nico starts it off the other way. One versus four. And look at the numbers and bodies working toward him. He can't go oh. back up on the ledge. He can't get away from it. And Twist is able to hit the shot. So we at least have some life in the game. We go. A little bit further, it seems. Liquid with quite the convincing pistol victory there. Two kills, a twist. JDM chiming in as well. He got a very key frag. Carrigan, like we said, the player with the Molotov, watching for the flanks from Popdog and T-Spawn. He gets taken down with a crisp headshot, and I mean that Molotov is not a factor anymore. If Carrigan gets that kill, JDM goes down, they potentially don't win that round. It's a good job there by the Team Sniper. Surely FaZe don't force into this. They get AKs in the third here. That means Liquid have to prepare for that. They can't really mess around with shotguns and MP7s. They have to get their heavy artillery out. M4A4s, a couple of UMPs as well. Interesting that JDM gets a scout. I would say just use a pistol this round and get the ore power in the next. But we'll see what he can do with the Leicester sniper. No chance really of FaZe making a dent at this. They get the bomb down here. It's going to be towards inside. Get that lower round trade and somehow if one player can just get the bomb down, that's going to be amazing. You'd have orbs yourself into round number three. That's where FaZe will go. One flashbang to work of it. Flash over. See if you can get this trade. It will be indeed Stanislaw. Very strong anchor on the B site. Can Ooh. he get it done? Ooh, dinked up. He might go down here. Tagged range. Stan. Gets oh, it's going to work. It is going to work. Gets inside of the Molotov. Ooh, and Rain times it well to catch off Stannis Law. However, they've lost pretty much everyone else, all except for Kiyoshima, who has just a Glock to work with. And a Glock at that range is about as good as a BB gun or a paint gun loaded with marbles. Not that people would ever do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> well, as good as it was going to get for FaZe there. They get one kill and the bomb down. They get a tremendous buy man going forward, and Liquid are going to know it as well. They can't keep that scout, surely. Going into this round, every round counts at this point. I think JDM might consider throwing that away. I have no idea. Actually, upgrades with the utility, and we could see an orphan alley for sure. He's got $5,300. He goes with the AK instead. We want to have the five AK-47s with the utility to work with, the Molotovs, the smokes. And he does get the orb. In fact, Nico drops it for him. Here we go. They did manage to distribute the funds accordingly. So Alu, AWP, and head armor as well. He'll be the focus going into this round. Up against the scout of JDM, as we said. Liquid. Back to the wall here. They've got one new MP, one scout. Up against a full buy. From Phase Gun looking incredibly scary right now. Alu. Waiting with the AWP on entry. When you have a lead like this, and you know you only need a few rounds, the urge to finish it on the first gun round after losing the pistol is always so great that when you lose, you become very impatient, and it's easy to let mistakes creep in. Which is, I think, very often why we see comebacks that get so close, and then finally the team tidies it up, puts it to bed, but it's a case that could happen here. Spades will be very eager Ooh. to get this over with. Good start by Kiyoshima to take down it's, Stanislaw. It's strange he's pushing that at Stan. They haven't really committed anywhere on the map. That's such a risk from Stanislaw to go that deep. And at least fighting back at least very quiet game from so far. That's a key kill to find. Watch Twist because he's actually backed off of the smoke and they were pushing through it. Kerrigan's made it to Old Bomb. He's go oh, I spotted. I was going to say, if he makes it all the way around, going I to Twist be, heard him. Exactly that. They're going to be, and he could pinch them off completely with no information that he's there. As Alu takes down Nitro, they still work their way in. JDM, he can't find the damage. Kerrigan's going to start to head off to CT now because Twist has allowed him to do so, and Alu, therefore, is immediately into Z Connector to flank Twist, who gets the shot onto Kiyoshima, but gets found immediately after by Nico. It's on to Elise, and the round is done. FaZe Clan will find 14.
Beautiful stuff there from FaZe. Nice little B split coming in. Some presence towards outside as well. Trying to get towards City Sport, and it wasn't really a requirement, though. Carrigan did that, pulled so much pressure away from the inside bombs. Like Alu, still a main entrance and outside as well. Watching for rotations. He can give calls. Everyone's going to be coming through. Pop Dog or CT Spawn, that's the only options they have. He had it under control and only Lee survived. JDM did what he could, Matt, to hold it off. But as we said, only that scout really did not have a decision to keep that weapon. It's such a key round. Anything you give away brings phase down in touching distance of taking this second map. I think he had to upgrade to a bit better weapon at that point. The M4A4 would have been good, but now the money in disarray. We do have enough for a buy just about, but that 3K per player. This play didn't make sense to me. What was the decision behind that? Like, why did he think... They have, no one's been watching Pop Dog. They hadn't dropped smokes, they hadn't dropped flash, but they hadn't even lined up to the smokes yet. And he just walks on the corner like that. Sure, it's a gamble that could pay off, but I mentioned I, it is a gamble that could pay. I mentioned the eagerness when you get when you lose this first gun round and you get a little eager and, 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 and overcommit. I think Stan maybe over eager to try and make the play to get Liquid back into it too soon. They're gonna try and make a play now. Rushing this time. Brain set and ready. Keo to spray down. It's traded back. It goes both ways. Good information for Liquid, but they're a very thinned out unit on the defensive side. Yeah, that doesn't actually work out too well for them at all. The fact they're in a three on three, and they still have that scout up as well. Have to spread themselves between the outer and inner bomb site. FaZe obviously had the option to stick together as well. Carrigan sneaking out of Ivy. He gets legged up by the scout, but I thought he would have gone for the refrag there. It doesn't happen. GDM doing damage at least, but that gives away his position. What's the next move here as Alu comes towards main entrance? JDM smoked out, presumably can't do anything with this, and he falls back towards CD Spawn. Carrigan using it as a chance to slip in the back tracks here. Carrigan. Oh, oh fluff step. Oh, actually, the aim right. Now yeah. he just stepped off the train and threw him off. Speaking of getting thrown off, he's hitting the edge of the train with most of his bullets and gets tagged down to two through the edge instead. Still a chance for Alu and Nico. Watch Nico's position. Oh, he can see it, but he can't find it. JDM to 22. Alu's going to have to do it on an AWP. Twist is still a target by which the op is correct. And Liege just pulled the pistol, but does he know that? Does he have the information that he's been tagged? Because again, it was through the edge of a train. It may not have been spotted. Well, 30 seconds remain. Alu definitely capable of winning these kind of situation upgrades, if you will, to the M4A4. An open B bomb site. He's got flashbangs to work with as well. Kits on the CT side, but Liege on 2 HP. Bomb goes down. This is for match point, series point, semi final point, whatever you want to call it. 2v1 begins. CTs have to stick together here. They're not 100% sure it's even in her. Still walking. Now they've got the call. They have to work together at this point. Alu, no Molotov. That would be perfect. But the CTs do have one. Already Molotov up towards up-up. Well, they haven't, in fact. Correct. Stated as well to say he upgraded to, to the M4 because now it's definite that he'll find Elise with it. Twist is trying to wait to hold the angle. He's already tagged him. Oh. Twist, good shot. Liquid pick up the round. Touch and go, I have to say that if Alu finds that first kill on Twist, takes him down to 5 HP, that round's done. But a nice shot from Twist there with the AK-47, they recover on AWP as well. Money's actually a little bit broken here for the T-side. Carrigan's gone all in. Do his teammates join him, it seems to be the case. They get the AWP out, a couple of AKs, a couple of Tech 9s. Trying to finish this one off, they win this round. 15-5, full reset on the TD side, it's definitely justified. Huge better rounds to work with here. Famous UMP. Saved AKs as well. Ali looks for the first pick. So the first pick and nearly gets naded down. It takes a fraction of damage. Twist, be careful, my friend, because he's trying to push out Ivy. Number is just two, but a number of players there. Push through with oh, the Tech as well. They've got them on the run. They've got them on the run, but Kerrigan's on his own, and he goes down. No way he was going to find more than one in that situation anyway. So positioning for Liquid prevails. It's two to go for FaZe. This round looking like Liquid at least have some control early on. And add to that, they've got another kill, but look at Rain. Look at Rain on the AK. Twist has to be ready for it. Swings to pre-fire, but fires down the alley rather than against the wall. It's given position of Hell to Rain, which is a very powerful position. But look at the bomb back toward T-Spawn and Nitro pushing onto it. Alu's going to check it, though, with the AWP. Oh, shot that could have won them the round. He's not going to redress it. He's going to leave Nitro there and try and get inside of the site because he knows Rain is clearing position, but he hasn't cleared where Stan is, which takes the bomb out of Alu's hands. It lets Nitro back into the site, and JDM's able to trade back to get Rain, leaving just Kiyoshima. Another two versus one situation to keep Liquids have above water here. Nitro and JDM working together. Kiyoshima on the abundance of time, but he's got 30 seconds here. Bomb on his back as well. Smoke to deploy. Hoping that a mistake is made. The CT's once again sticking together. So plant very likely here. Could still bail towards inside if he wants to. Doesn't look like that'll be the case. Going for the aggressive push here, trying to find the first pick. Nitro denies it, but Kiyoshima did spot him there. 
ADM with the AWP trying to take him down after the bomb's planted. Hopefully he tries to get a safer position. He can head the shop. He's going to stay on the train. Wants to take the fight. Knows they're going to be pushing in. They're going to push together. He's a bit open. He has to back off. He has to hold the exact same angle. Ooh. Falls off the train. JDM misses. Now he gets a chance for escape. He pushed himself forward so that he was beside the top of the bomb train. And oh, that nade goes far. But he knows exactly where it came from. And Keo is able to take down JDM. Hold the music just yet. That's round 15, <laughs> not 16, but they're one away. Well, that was a huge round to win. Kiyoshima holds his nerve there, and the two versus one perfectly played. This was a kill that pretty much secured it. JDM gets, goes to the refrag, the AWP has to upgrade with the Famous. Sure, the nade does damage, but it gives his position away. Kiyoshima, cool as you like, manages to pull it off. Round number 21, pistols, one M4A4 for twists, no defuse kits, little grenades. Surely, this is it. Round number 21, Liquid haven't showed up to their map whatsoever. FaZe is dominating them in every scenario. Still a rough buy for FaZe though. Hardly helping. You can see they've got three AKs, a UMP, and Carol can just down to the Tech 9. Still a chance for Liquid. They can just about win this round. It's not over just yet. Kia with the pre-fire at ladder. I was really tempted to make the same screen back. You wrecked my ears. I know, that's why I didn't do it. I've also, I'm also really loud in my own ears right now. Now he's going to wait. Kerrigan on the Tech 9. One M4 for Liquid. Twist playing toward the alley with it. He's going to get closer inside of the site. Nitro, sandwich, smoke, flash through. He's getting closer to where Ali's playing. But he's gone back around the other direction instead. Good win for JDM. But traded back by Keo and Elige caught in the middle. It's all on to Twist M4, who's got a chance with it, surprisingly. Nearly gets a third as Kerrigan beats him with the Tech 9. It puts us to Stan on a 5 7 and puts FaZe one kill away from making it into a semi final, being our third team. Our eighth team to make it to the playoffs, surprisingly. But our third team potentially to make it to a semi. Hold your breath because Stan with armor has picked up a kill, but he's looked the wrong way. Kerrigan's got him. 16 to 5, FaZe win map two. Dominant performance there from FaZe, looking much better. They've had their ups and downs this tournament. This was certainly a peak. Looking clinical in the first half. The CT side performance was fantastic. Pushing the Ivy, pushing main entrance, not letting Liquid do anything on their T side. Looks stifled, overwhelmed. And that's what we've come to expect to phase. This tournament they haven't impressed me, but this is back to business as usual. Liquid on their own map, they're going to be picking up five rounds. Disappointing to see it wasn't as climatic as it could have been, but still, you can't argue with some of the numbers that FaZe were posting. Nico especially, Rain looked fantastic, and Kiyoshima back-to-back -back clutches as well. Very good stuff from him, and you can see the dejected Liquid there, but commiserations there. 3-0 in the groups, look great, but taken down by FaZe eventually. Taken down by FaZe indeed, and they are looking alive in the playoffs. 2-0. To start it off against Liquid into the semi-finals, convincing at that. Back up their gear very diligently. Liquid will do the same. Looks like Nico wants to speak with Paul, but I am impressed by pretty much everyone. Everyone had a moment on that game, and Nico especially has been quiet in this event, but certainly turned it on today. Absolutely. Always going to be dangerous in these sort of tournaments. That CT side aggression, it has shut them down. He was finding opening picks left, right, and center. They looked a little bit quiet on overpass, I have to say, but they managed to put it together and actually put on a really convincing performance. They're going to be gunning for the number one position here at this tournament now. They're back and they're looking fierce. Well, Nico is with Red Eye on stage, and I'm looking forward to hearing exactly what they have to say about it. A dominant performance. Yes, thanks very much, Sadek. It's with Nico. Congrats, first of all. Straightforward victory in the end. Talk us through your thoughts on going into the game, how difficult they were to play, and, and whether you came out of it thinking, yeah, that's pretty much what we expected. Yeah, we went pretty confident into this match. We knew that we should have been this one, so we knew that we were going to play much better than we did in the group stage, and we just delivered our game, and I hope that we are going to keep the same game for semi-finals as well, and yeah, we just played our game. Lots of FaZe fans here down the front all waiting for you and cheering you on through the match. Does that help? Yeah, thank, thanks for supporting, guys. We really appreciate it. You are our second, or you are our sixth, sixth mate. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you're second mate. I think you've got a couple six, of those six, in the team. <laughs> um, how are you playing yourself? How do, how do you feel? There's no one here, there's no one watching right now. It's just me and you. Just tell me, how, how are you playing? How I'm playing? How, yeah, how are you doing? Like me? Yeah. I'm doing or playing? Both. Both, I'm doing great. Obviously. Good, how are you playing? I'm playing even better. <laughs> he is playing very well, ladies and gentlemen. FaZe are your next semi-finalist.
the Pay Safeguard post match breakdown. FaZe Clan on track to continue what is an untarnished record of grand finals in the offline events they've attended since the addition of the Bosnian Bulldozer. Nico, you saw it, heard from him with Paul. He's playing better than ever and feeling even better so. And now you can see you guys and the FaZe fans on Twitter have been voicing their happiness and perhaps disdain Liquid unable to do too much. They managed to acquire 14 rounds across two maps. It's certainly not good enough for them to get to those semi-finals and they will be unable to replicate some of the successes that organization has found in this very arena. Joining me is Freiburg and Chad, and of course, otherwise known as Sponge. And Adam, straight to you. This is over quick. That was a full series and it feels like it's uh, barely began before it finished. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, the second map just wasn't in, in face favor. Train, we talked about it before. Sure. Uh, it's a map they feel confident on, and everyone in face has played great. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not really much to talk about. They just kind of, yeah. like like Chad said before, they're kind of like disrespecting Liquid in a way yeah. it felt like. Absolutely. Now, of course, t talking of just how speedy that was, Nico and Kyo firing on all cylinders. Yeah, for sure. And uh, talking about quickies, uh, Alex, the, the pace of that game was something which was very impressive, right? And okay. I have a little Telestrator clip here to demonstrate the, the masterclass that was phase uh, demonstrating uh, you know the, the dictating of pace so if we pause it right now let's just set this up I want to have a discussion here with Adam so as you can see right now this is the this is after we settled into the first real gun round right. right so as you can see here this is the standard one player solo inside locking down that bomb site and then you've got you, the another three players in, in the yard and then one player caretaking Ivy so normally what want you want to happen in this situation is your players are all going to push up close you're going to be playing up close get in these kind of positions so that you can stop uh, any sure. mid-round aggression and, and really block them out and we were speaking in the, in the pre-match about you want to go inside early to force them to be honest and play, a, play another player inside with poor little Keo here. So if we continue to play out the clip, they go for a really poor decision, in my opinion, on what to do on the first gun round. They just basically rush hard out. You see one player goes down to utility usage just on team mid, and then they come out of a smoke. Phase are all set up. There's so many people there to take them down, and it's just an absolute slaughter. If we can keep the minimap up for a second, Adam, I don't know about you, but what I think, you know, obviously we talk about doing the inside thing to, to draw that player. But if we do something a little bit different and you put pressure on, on the normal setup, you let the rounds slow down a little bit, you go and you put pressure on Ivy, you come, at, you, you don't really need to do a lot in team at the start, right? And you put a little bit of pressure on Pop and you put a little bit of pressure on Brown. What you want to do against a team like FaZe, in my opinion, is make them use their utility and make them get strung out and get a little bit edgy and hopefully, hopefully you can find a pick. But in this situation, going hard out just means that they're going to have full control for the rest of the half, in my mind. Because what we saw happen was then FaZe were able to play two people inside knowing that the next, the next little draw card was going in, right? They right, were, they right, were right. one step ahead. So what, what do you reckon you'd do as the first gun round or what would be something that NIP in the past would have led towards? I mean, I've, I've always been a fan of just doing a default in the, especially in the first weapon round, yep. right? Um, you spread out the, on the map, just sh making sure they don't push or get any information and then you'll probably do a uh, either an A or B hit. As you said, I prefer also to go B, especially in the beginning of the match. Yep. Just the same as you said, that, I mean, the CTs will have to play two guys inside B. So in the future, after you've been maybe a successful B hit, I mean, the CTs will be afraid of that. And even if you stay like all quiet all around the map, the CTs will most likely play two, side, two guys inside B, yeah. and you can fake it, you can go A, you, you don't even have to fake it just to take over Brown House, right? And yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, explained great by you, uh, well, Shad here. So to be devil's advocate for a sure. moment, if you are liquid, I don't blame them for, be, for being slightly tentative and scared of pushing inner because Kyo was yes. hanging out there. Kiyoshima, the scary Frenchie, as they were described by his teammates, describing him as someone that wants to prove the other French teams wrong and continuously outplacing them as of late. And this is some of the damage that he did to them when they did Jesus. try to push in towards it. I mean, look at this. Yeah. Alu and him as a very scary crossfire. You'll see this. He turns his attention towards Ramp, and guess who's holding up for him? It's Alu babysitting those two angles. Yeah, I'd definitely put uh, Kiyoshima as the MVP of this train game. I mean, he, it just feels like he's so comfortable playing the B-bomb site. And I mean, just getting all these frags and the important rounds as well. I mean, yeah. we talked about like Liquid maybe needed a good start because FaZe had a momentum coming in from Overpass, right? And I mean, yeah, they won the pistol round uh, Liquid, but then the same happened like it happened on Overpass where they just lost the second round or a fourth by, and then just FaZe took over the whole game and just kept on rolling, right? So I think, I mean, as Liquid as a team going after this game, I would probably... I mean, just making sure that if we lose one of these fourth buys, yeah. like, how do we get out of this, like, don't fall and just lose round after round after round? I mean, I'm impressed by teams who loses a fourth round, then buys up themselves and it punches back at the other team. Yeah. I mean, that's 
that's not that's not something you can teach, right? That's just something you have to have within yourself. You have to have a player that can be unfazed, ugh, pun not intended, <laughs> against you know the will of the your opponents. Yeah, and I, I think you know you can look at it two different ways. Uh, to be confident in your teammates, you definitely want to force by back and show, hey, look, we can get yeah, this right. this it can be back fire. in our way exactly. But sometimes in certain situations, especially in the first half, maybe it's not such a bad thing on a map like Train, maybe Overpass Nuke, where you do need a lot of utility to actually take a knee, take the eco, build up that economy and go from there. But we definitely had the discussion in Renegades, right? The guys were like, hey, Chad, we're fed up of just taking just P250 yeah. and, and no Kev Ecos. Let's actually force by and show, hey, we do have aim. We can play your level of Counter-Strike and you can't disrespect us. Didn't work too well for us, uh, but I'm sure a team with a bit more firepower might be able to get away with it. <laughs> sure. I mean, if you want firepower, the stats don't lie. You'll see it beneath you now. Rain had over 100 ADR for a series. Sure, a map, but to do is do so over the two, Liquid just had to bend the knee to consistent damage from Rain. And that, what's interesting to me, is he's someone that's not necessarily at the top of the scoreboard. I mean, you know, he's fragging, sure. But when you look at the ADR, sometimes there is an unsung hero element to that, that average damage per round, right, Freiburg? There is some players, whether it be at HEs, be it tagging and not committing to a frag, there is something more to it. Sure, I mean, you talk about like rating and getting kills, but you also maybe Rain is one of those that gets killed a lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, eventually I don't think that he's the first guy rushing in all the time, but I mean, as an entry yeah. fragger, um, just seeing like how much damage someone does, like it really shows that how much you actually do for your team, sure. kind of. I mean, you can have a negative KD, but you can still also have had a very big impact in a game by just maybe getting a clutch, maybe getting like pistol run skills. I mean, so, I mean, stats, I like it, but it's not always Correct. Showing Don't the tell correct the whole way. picture, do they? From yeah, it's, it's not yeah. fantastic. Yeah, the, the stats can sometimes not lie, but de deceive. White lies. White lies. Uh, player Half that lies. Some would describe them as. Um, right, Freiburg. I'm sorry. Did you did I cut you off? Yeah. Well, a player that doesn't lie is Nico. I mean, he's, he's <laughs> always getting good stats and he's always playing well. So yes, I'll he give is. that to Nico. He's always performing. What a player to have in your team, and what a pickup by Face a few months yeah. ago. Certainly worth his money and more. And they're getting closer to the money themselves. Of course, Grand Finals not yet, but but they are in the semis, and FaZe continue this untarnished record so far of these offline performances. We'll be seeing more from them tomorrow. They're done. Now they'll be getting themselves some kip, and you guys can't yet. Strap yourselves in. More Counter-Strike on the way. In fact, SK and Optic are coming up next. Some people are feeling skeptical. Some would say skeptical about this next matchup, but we'll find out how it goes down after the break.